So I've uncovered the mother load of all of the data that Amazon keeps across all of their properties. Now, I think we all know that all of these large companies have a lot of data on us, but I think when you actually see it, when you peel back the onion, you look at the folders, you look at the files, you look at the data points that they keep, it's frankly shocking. There's a ton of implications if you use any of Amazon's platforms like Amazon, Audible, Prime, Whole Foods, Alexa, but there's as many implications if you sell on the Amazon platform to see how they use this data and where the future is of selling on Amazon. Buckle in guys, this is a doozy. Let's get after it. What is up guys, welcome to Heist. On this channel, I deep dive into all things Amazon. And frankly, this is a really, really interesting one for me as an individual that shops on Amazon and uses a lot of their other platforms. And it's super fascinating for selling on the platform because it gives me a lot of insights into how they're using data, what data they have, and what it may mean for selling on Amazon in the future. So how the heck did I get this data? You know, this wasn't some little secret loophole in fact, this is accessible to anybody that lives in the US and wants access data on any company they interact with on the internet. Now you may see this thing pop up, it's really annoying on all the websites you go to that says allow cookies. That actually came from something out of Europe called the GDPR, which is a law across Europe that requires companies to get permission to get data on you. Obviously this doesn't directly impact people in the US, but something interesting happened. The state of California passed a Consumer Protection Act that basically enabled anybody in the US to request the data that companies house on them. So what did I do? I requested my own shopper data. Well, I went to Amazon and I said, hey, what data do you have on me? And it's an insane amount of data. In this video, I'm gonna break it all down, at least the most interesting parts, show you what the data is, but most importantly, give you my take on why I think it's important if you're selling on Amazon. So let's dive into my computer and get after it. All right, so first things first, how did I actually get this stuff? If you literally just type in Amazon personal data into Google, you'll find some link like this. Uh, you just request your personal information, click on that link, which is what I did. You're then gonna go to a page on Amazon where it's gonna give you all the details. You click on that request my data section, you've gotta be logged into your Amazon seller account. Once you do that, um, this is basically what's gonna happen. You select down the drop down. you can select specific data that you want, and there's a ton. This is some of the categories here that you can see uh, of the data that you can request. I basically just went down to the bottom and did request all data. Takes them, I think it's like two or three days uh, to populate all the information, then they send you an email with a zip folder. What does the zip folder have? This is it. It's literally dozens and dozens and dozens of folders. Every digital footprint of everything I've done going back to 2009 on Amazon, as well as anything on Alexa, anything I've shopped on Whole Foods, anything I've watched on Prime, it's got it all. And all of those folders sometimes have three, four folders within it. So it took me you know, close to five, six hours to go through all of this data to find what's honestly just most interesting. And I'm gonna pull those things out, but specifically I'm gonna talk uh, throughout the video and at the end, about what it means for Amazon sellers. So the first interesting batch, and this is a new set, I actually did this uh, same data request a couple years back and it didn't have nearly as much information. There's clearly a lot more data that Amazon is housing now across all their properties and specifically when shopping on the Amazon platform, there's a lot more nooks and crannies of information that they're pulling together. Some of the newest and most interesting data that I found was in the advertising section. So it shows every single ad that I've clicked, um, which is I think pretty obvious, but there's some less obvious things behind the curtain of me as an individual that they're starting to look at. One is audiences. Um, this is something that they're using specifically with DSP advertising, although I think that they're using it across the algorithm to identify what results to show in uh, organic search and what products are most relevant to me. But this is kind of pulled, I think it's more recent. I was buying a lot of car parts, so it's got a lot of automotive interests. But you can see here, it's got demographics on me. Um, basically, things that it's called that are me as a demographic audience, effectively. The second thing is around the advertising audiences. And this is where it gets really interesting. Um, in market is one category that basically shows things that I'm actively looking to buy. So for an advertiser, if you're targeting somebody in market using DSP or some of the other platforms within Amazon, 
This is another way other than just keywords I'm typing into amazon.com that enable advertisers to get their products and offers in front of me. So you can see I'm in market for books and magazines, electronics, home and garden, household, music, pet supplies, toys and games. It's got some lifestyle stuff. What am I into from a lifestyle perspective? Automotive, business and industry, conscious consumption, books, health and wellness. It goes on. Now, there's some really interesting ones here. I think that they're probably pulling this from Prime, but it's also got lifestyle video audiences. So the kinds of movies I watch, the shows I watch, etc. They've also got something specific to sports here. So uh, it's got stuff here, skateboarding, which I'm actually not into. So I don't know what that one is, but golf, absolutely. Uh, I've looked at USA Basketball, Golden State Warriors, USA Soccer, Real Salt Lake, and USA Football, Dallas Cowboys. Go Cowboys, even though they really suck this year. Uh, so you can see here, it's kind of pulling not only what I would have expected them to have, which is what do I shop for, what do I click on, and we're going to get to that later, but it's trying to get into me as a human being. What am I actually actively looking to buy? What are the things that I'm interested in from a lifestyle perspective? What sports teams do I like? And then it's got some more basic stuff just on customer attributes. Um, so it doesn't know my gender in this particular one, although I'm going to get to how it identifies gender later. It's got language preferences, pretty benign stuff, but it's also got household information. So you can see here, um, at least in the last five years, I've lived with other people. So it's got my primary name and uh, email address, all that stuff when I registered. It's got my Alexa communications and when that started. And it's got another member of the household here that I've lived with. So I think what they're doing, and I'm gonna get into how they can track the device that you use later in some of the search results. But even if you've got one Amazon account, it knows the members of the household and I think based on the device that's used when shopping or the types of things that people are shopping for, they can identify the interests of the person shopping underneath that account, not only me that actually owns the account. So interesting stuff. So this is actually, I think, one of the more shocking things I found in this. There's a whole series of folders related to Alexa, which for those that don't know, it's their speaker system that you can ask questions of, etc. cetera, um, that a lot of people have throughout their house. And one of the folders here, it's got a bunch of them here, but it's got audio and transcription uh, as one of the folders. So I'm like, there's no way they've got audio recordings. They do have audio recordings. Um, and I don't know what the privacy settings are. I'm sure you can opt out of this stuff. I had no idea that anything and everything that's ever been said into an Alexa device that I've had has been captured and recorded as an audio file. I went through this, this is probably eight-ish years or so of audio files and everything that's been set into the Alexa device, what I've said, hey Alexa, uh, has been recorded here. So I double clicked on one of them and sure enough, it was from years and years ago, it was something that I set into Alexa. Now, I don't think that there's some creepy person at Amazon named Albert like that's listening to every one of the things that I say into Alexa, but I think it's highly likely that they transcribe some of this information, they know what music I'm asking, they know what I'm asking about, if I'm going on a trip, what the weather is like, things I'm interested in, things I wanna ask Google as an example. I think they're probably transcribing this and they're cultivating that into those profiles I mentioned uh, just above this. But if you've got Alexa, they're keeping recordings of everything that you said, pretty wild stuff. The other thing, uh, back in, I think it was like 2017, somewhere around there, Amazon bought Whole Foods, uh, move into grocery, obviously. You know, you think it's just a really cool store that's dominating grocery in a very specific niche in the US. Great business, good margins, brand that people love. They wanted to expand the grocery assortment on Amazon, like makes a ton of sense. One thing I don't think I fully appreciated is it was as much, if not more of a data play than it was just getting access to their stores and integrating their catalog into Amazon Grocery. You can see here all of the various Whole Foods stores that I've physically been to. Don't know exactly how they know all this stuff, but you can see here so it knows geographically where I've shopped and where I'm actively shopping. I'm sure that may impact some of the results if I shop on Amazon.com as well. It's got all the purchases that I've made. Uh, I'm assuming this is when I've actually logged into my Amazon account at Whole Foods because I haven't done that all the time. But you can see here 2019, 2022, 2020, um, the order number, the product I purchased, the quantity, where I purchased it from. So even though I'm not on Amazon.com, it knows what I'm buying when I'm in Whole Foods. Uh, and it tracks and has all that stuff going back here five, six years. So let's get into the mother load. If you shop on Amazon, and especially if you sell on Amazon, this is the data footprint of people 
that Amazon has when consumers are shopping on their platform. First of all, you can see here the time in which the search was uh, initiated. It's got the department that it came from. It's got whether it came from a browser, tablet, etc. It's got desktop or mobile. So it knows whether you're shopping on your phone or on your computer or tablet. It's got the search type. Um, keyword here uh, is going to be a lot of the main ones. I actually don't know what ED is. <laughs> so I know what ED is outside of Amazon, but I don't know what ED means on Amazon. So leave it in the comments if you know what ED in the Amazon context looks like. It's got a session, so they're going to tag everything, every single session that I do on Amazon. It's got the query. It's got some stuff about me and my prime customer. Here's some interesting ones here. Did it come from an external link? Yes or no. And did the search come from an external site? So there's a lot of talk about whether external traffic impacts organic rank or not. In my experience, I've been speaking about this for four plus years. It absolutely does. This is the indication that Amazon knows and tracks whether or not the search came from outside of Amazon. And I think that there's a highlight there that they reward that traffic differently with your organic ranking. Uh, then it's got the first uh, search query string. So I blocked this out for my own privacy. But this is a list of all the keywords that were used in that particular query. It's got the computer I was on. It's got my IP address. So if you're ever as an Amazon seller doing naughty stuff uh, using the same IP address, that's how Amazon's typically going to catch you. But you can see they, they track IP address, obviously. There's the keyword used here, whether I was a business customer. It's got the last browse node. And then this is what's interesting. It's got basically an ASIN, so the first added item. So if I added an item to cart based on that search, it tracks that ASIN. And then if I actually purchase an item, it's got that ASIN here as well. Um, I've got another data file I'll get into here in a second that basically shows it knows everything that you've ever looked at or added to cart, even if it's in the same search query. So it knows if you clicked on added to cart product one, went back to search, added product two, and or ultimately purchased product two, it's going to actually track that data as well. And knows how many items I clicked based on the search. So if I clicked on none, obviously that search term wasn't relevant to what I was looking for. If I clicked on multiple items, it means I was shopping more. Shows how many I added to cart, how many items I ordered. It's got the actual purchase price. Moving along here, whether I abandoned the search. So if I didn't find what I was looking for and went back or left Amazon altogether. Then it's got the domain that I first searched from, whether it was on Amazon or off. And then it knows whether or not my first search was actually from an external ad. So a ton of stuff here. I think the so what is Amazon knows everything, at least in my case, going back to 2009. Everything, every time I've initiated a search, whether I started on Amazon, started off of it, how I navigated, how I clicked on products, how I added products, whether I bought, didn't buy, what node I came from, what computer I was on what IP address I came from, all of it. A secondary file also shows um, the cart ads and purchases. Uh, so again, it's gonna show all of the different ASINs I've ever added to cart or purchased. It's obviously gonna use these, I believe, for organic searches to find out what products are relevant for what search terms. But it's also building a profile on me to identify my interests, my lifestyle, all those other things that they can then sync up with other data across their assets that are used by advertisers and them to get the right product in front of Amazon shoppers. There's a separate file again that shows all the IP addresses as well as devices. Again, I think this is important because most people have one Amazon account, they have one Alexa account. I think what they're doing here is not only are they identifying where you are geographically, what devices you're using, how you shop, but based on the device type specifically, they're identifying who in the household is shopping for different things. So. Let's say that I've got an account and I've got a child or a spouse or somebody that's shopping. It's going to know based on their device and some of their behavior that they're doing, whether it's me or whether it's them. And then it can use that data for advertisers and other search information, again, to optimize the shopping experience and to sell more ads. Another thing here, it actually rates the trust of actual shoppers on Amazon. So if I'm a bad shopper, if I'm leaving bad reviews, they're gonna flag me and they're not gonna show me as a participant when I'm leaving reviews and other things. So you can see that I'm trusted, hooray, it looks like I'm good. Uh, but what's also interesting is every single ASIN I've ever left a review for, it also is tracking that as well. Another thing from a region standpoint, so obviously Amazon's got a highly complex network across the US with different fulfillment centers. That's gonna impact the readiness of it to ship to me. It's profiling me based on where I typically am shopping and it's identifying that. I'm sure that it's gonna change based on their inventory across where I live and where I shop. 
it may present results to me differently just based on geographic access. So it's obviously tracking where you are regionally as well. So I could have done a two hour video on this. Again, you guys saw there was dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of data footprints. Uh, I think the so what here is, is that traditionally Amazon from a shopper experience and certainly as an Amazon seller has been very keyword based. And obviously they're tracking all that stuff, probably more agonizing detail than you even realize. What I think is most interesting though, is beyond Amazon itself, as well as on Amazon and across their properties, they're identifying me. Who am I? What do I like to buy? What am I actively buying? What am I listening to? What am I asking Alexa? Where am I shopping at Whole Foods? What am I buying at Whole Foods? Where am I regionally? Who's in my household and what is their profile? It's then aggregating this data to customize a shopping experience for me on Amazon. And if you're selling on Amazon, you need to be thinking about these things. The future of advertising, the future of listings, the future of creating products, the future of organic search goes well beyond keywords. People are now entering the algorithm and this is how Amazon's doing it. Now, if you wanna know where things are going next, stay tuned next week because I'm gonna be dropping a video on how you can harness this from an advertising standpoint. It's frankly one of the biggest levers I've seen selling on Amazon in years. You're gonna wanna stay tuned for it. If that video drops after you've watched this and you're watching this past a week or so, there's gonna be a link around here to that video. Hope you found this interesting, albeit a little bit scary. I uh, hope you got some more insights for you as a consumer on Amazon and all their various properties. And hopefully you've got some insights if you sell on Amazon. Till next time, guys. Thanks for shopping by. Cheers.